Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. President. Hello, good morning. Hi, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. This how you all. Yeah, fine. Fine, yeah. fine. Thank you. So I believe we can start all. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yes, please. It's a new day. What is new? What did you hear in the news that you think it's related to macroeconomics. What did you hear? Please, can I speak? Sure. Okay, I heard uh, something about data bank. They were talking about GDP increasing from 3 point something to 4 point something percent in the business news yesterday. Okay, so... Um, currently, I can't ask you what is the implication on the economy? So you are spare you for that. Next time, don't say something of um, three point something. You should be exact, okay? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, so who else? Who else? Can I speak? Yes, please. Okay, so um, yesterday, our finance minister was called to parliament to come and answer questions relating to the luxurious jet our president used for his travels. Okay. He wasn't able to give us- Any tangible reason, right? You understand. <laughs> okay, so any other last one? Last person. Last one, can I? Okay, sure. And there was also something about taxes, about um, some taxes. people in the, yes, GRE. Okay. The people in the affluent society not wanting to pay their taxes as expected of them. So. Oh, okay. So it's nice listening to news, I guess, right? it helps you to understand what is going on in the economy. And basically you are learning this course to understand what is actually going on in the economy. So I would encourage all of you, at least, if you can't do it in the morning, in the evening, try and listen to one news, one story, okay, in a day. And I think in the month, you would have about approximately 31 news in your head which is not bad, okay? Especially business news, since you guys are business students. This will help Twitter. you understand the course. Okay, okay, Twitter too. Uh, it's a nice handle, just that sometimes they do some shakara things, but we move, okay, regardless. Okay, so I think last week we got here, okay, and I would want to address this. Last week, someone asked me if someone has a business in an outside country or in abroad, how do we get to tax that person? Okay, recently something happened in Ghana and I know you guys are away. There was a luxurious wedding that went on and the individual was gifted 1 million US dollars, okay? And because it was an open wedding, the tax people got to know and they wrote to them that, hey, chairman, we've heard that you have $1 million in your possession. And as I told you last Monday, usually when people dash you something, you are supposed to pay tax on it. But I know Ghanaians, how many of us would do? Okay, because that was an open story. Uh, they said, now it's a fake check. So we can't hold them responsible. Okay, so this is how basically the tax revenue people get to know people having money and they try taxing them. If they don't get to know, then it means those people would be 
you know, forgiven or move away with their, with their money. Okay, so basically that's how we sometimes get to know this kind of uh, small, small tips. So I think last week we got here, last, last Monday we got here, right? Yes. Right? Yes. yes please. Oh, okay. So yes, please. what do you recall from our last section? What did we learn? Can I speak? Sure. I okay, like so Ben is right. Media. Oh, Benny. I can see your hand up. Uh, Should I lower it for you? Yes, please. Okay. okay. So Benny, we are listening to you. Followed by Lydia. What did we learn? Okay, I learned that ma macroeconomics study the economy as an aggregate unit. Okay. All right. So we said something about that. Lydia. Yes. Do you have any addition? Okay. And I also learned that unlike micro, which focuses on individual markets. Uh, yeah. And I, I also learned that the two main branches in macroeconomy is a long run economic goods and short run fluctuation. All right, thank you very much. Any other? Benita. Okay, thank you. I also learned about the secular owl model. And then you went on saying that. Sorry, and then I also learned about what national income accounting means, which you said it, it refers to the framework of measuring the level of economic activities. And you said we have three, three approaches to calculate the G, GDP, okay. which is the income approach, expenditure approach, and um, the product approach too. All right. Thank you. Uh, okay. So, Lydia, I think I can lower your hand, right? Benita. Yes, please. All right. So, basically, that's what we did last week. We spoke about macroeconomics. We defined economics as a whole. We defined macroeconomics. Then we spoke of the two branches of economics. We said we have micro and macro. And we said micro deals with the individuals and their reactions in the market and macro deals with the entire economy, okay? Then we came down to the themes, okay? Or the main topics in macroeconomics. We spoke of GDP, GNP, inflation, um, unemployment, and many more. So anytime you hear someone talking about macroeconomic indicators, these are the main indicators we use to check whether the economy is growing or doing well. Okay. After us, I think we studied um, why we study macroeconomics. Then we channeled it to uh, the national income accounting, which we said is the framework for calculating out our economic activities. So we dealt with GDP, we dealt with GNP, net factor payments from abroad, then I think we go to disposable income. So today we are going to continue from here. And I want to use one hour to do this one hour for tutorials. Okay, so maybe I won't run fast, but uh, we will move faster, small, okay? So when we say disposable income, okay, you could see private in front of this. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, please. Yes. Okay, so we said disposable income is the amount of income available to the private sector to spend and save, okay? And last week, I told you 
take yourself as a private person. If you get an income and you decide to keep one CD in the bank and spend, let's say, one CD, that one CD, okay, in the bank that you have left income, okay. So for this disposable income, you do all your deductions, okay. Maybe you buy airtime as student, you pay your dues, okay. You will do one or two things. And this same thing happens in the economy, okay. For the economy to say we have this to save, so no our expenditure, we strike the difference and we get what we are supposed to save. Okay, so for government, these are some of the deductions, taxes. We will deduct SNET. You know, transfer payments. Last week I remember I told you when government makes any payment without any direct receipt of goods and services, we term that as transfer payment. So because government is the one making payments, it's a cost to the government, but we don't add it to the government spending because we are not getting any um, receipt of goods and services, but government is incurring a cost there. So we have to deduct it. So after making all these deductions, we get what we call the disposable income. That is what is left for us to spend and save, okay? Now, I remember we also spoke of um, net factor payments, okay? And we said that when you find the difference between the GDP and the GNP, you get what is called net factor payments, okay? And I took my time to explain that last week. So I think we can move forward. So we got to this formula. Disposable income. We said it is GDP plus the net factor payment plus transfer payment plus interest minus taxes. Okay, so in exams or today when we are solving the tutorials, you see all these formulas coming back again to you. Okay. So actually, um, I don't know if you guys can hear me. There is some mowing going on around here. So the noise here is a bit intense. So kindly forgive me in about 15 minutes, they'll be done, okay. But if you can hear me, then I think we can continue. Okay, so looking at the formula here, where my case is, this is what we call the disposable income, okay. So the first Y is what we term as the GDP, okay, plus the net factor payment, okay, plus the net factor payment. So if, all right, so Nyantechi. So why is the GDP Y? Oh, it's just a variable trying to represent something, okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So if I add all of this and deduct taxes, I get something called the disposable income. So you've got to put this formula in mind or you can write it down. That is the Y, the net factor payment, transfer payment, interest minus taxes. We would come back to this formula again, especially when we are dealing with the tutorial set. Okay, so now we are going to learn something called aggregate savings. When I say savings, I know we, we, we always definitely understand the story. Okay, so when we say savings, all that we are saying is after you are done deducting what you will consume, okay, the amount that is left on you is what we term as the savings. So after government also deducting all his expenditure, the amount left is what we term as savings. Okay, so we have the private savings and the government savings. If we add these two, we, we get what is called aggregate savings. Sometimes you hear national savings. 
or total savings. Okay, so these three words are the same. They are just not different from each other. So when you hear total savings, aggregate savings or national savings, we are saying is the summation of what the private savings and the government savings. Now, how do we get a private savings? The private savings is disposable income minus C. Okay, disposable income minus C. So if I know my disposable income formula and I deduct C from it, I get private savings. So you can put this formula to the, this side, the whole of this side. Okay. So from here to here, it's our disposable income. If I take this C from it, I get disposable income for private. Okay, so that will be our private savings. Then we have our government savings. With the government savings, it is the revenue. And you know, government usually gets its revenue from taxes. Okay, that is the main source of revenue for government, taxes. So if we deduct the transfer payment, which is an expense government is making from the revenue, which is taxes, then we deduct the interest payment, which is government paying interest on amount he borrowed, then we get the total government revenue. Then the G day is government spending. And last week we took, last Monday we took our time to understand what goes into the G. So government trying to make expenses to enforce law, constructing roads, hospitals, schools. That is what we term as what, the G. Now the TR and the INT, which is the interest, they're also expenses, but because we are not getting any direct benefit from it, that is why we don't add it to the government spending. Okay, so for us to know government savings, we say it's T minus TR minus INT, all into bracket minus G. So how do we get the savings total? Okay, so which is basically total savings. So total savings is basically adding the two. Okay, and you can see something here which is like, uh, there are uh, missing figures, okay, or missing variables, okay. Now we are going to understand how that missing variables came about, okay. So let's look at something. Okay, so I believe you can see this screen too, my white screen or my white board. Please. Okay. Yes, yes sir. So this is what we said. We said that our S private, okay. I hope you can see this. No. Our please. S private, can you see it? No. What no. can't you see? Oh. What's your writing? writing is not really. Yeah. Yeah, so All good. Right. Okay, so let me try. So we have something like our S. Oh, dear. It's not clear. Okay. The this are not typing the text. Come again. He 
I want to do some cancellations. That's why I don't want to do the text. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah so we said, come again. So we I said, said why? Uh huh. Can you see now? Yes, please. We okay. Let's factor payment plus. We said transfer plus interest minus t minus c right then we said s government is equals to bracket to we have our t minus tr minus int bracket close minus g right so we said our S total, which I'm representing with ST, is equals to the two of them. So we have S private plus S government. Is that cool? Yeah. So our ST is equals to the whole of this, okay? My plus this, okay. The whole of this plus this. So now let's see how this goes. We have y plus NFP plus TR plus INT minus T, okay, minus C plus. See, it means I'm taking this side, okay? I'm taking this side. Plus T minus TR minus INT minus G. Okay. So we can see that we have positive T here. We have negative T here, right? Yeah. So this can go. Yeah. And this can also leave. We have positive TR here. We have negative TR here. This can also leave. And this can also leave. We have yeah. positive INT here. And we have negative INT here. What, what is left? What is left is what? Our y SP. plus NFP. Y plus, plus NFP minus C. Minus C minus, minus what? G. 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 Please, are you are we cool with it? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. And you know we can further, we can further do something to this. Okay. We said that this G, this Y is what our GDP. So we can have ST to be equals to what is the component of GDP? We said we have C plus I, right? Plus G, plus what? NX, okay. right? Yeah, Remember, right. that's this side only. Plus, we have NFP minus C minus what? G. Can we do another cancellation? Yes. We have positive C here, we have negative C, it goes. We have positive, positive G, G here, we have negative, right? Yeah. Good. Yes. So what is our final ST? Our final ST is what? I plus what? N NX X plus what? NX. 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 Okay. So this is what we call the savings function. So mm -hmm. my boss can ask you guys to derive the savings function or savings, nas national savings. Okay. Mm, usually, if he doesn't ask you to derive, then you can just memorize this side. Okay. Just where the Keza is moving. I plus NX, sorry, NX plus NFP. Okay. Just this side. But when he asks you to derive, you start from the top. Okay. To the down. Now, let's break something here. Anytime we have something like this, this ST is equals to I plus this NX plus NFP is called 
current account in macroeconomics. Anytime you see NX plus NFP, we call it current account in macroeconomics. And we are going to explain all these things. Okay, so I'm going to represent the whole of this by what? C. This means that our, our total savings, okay, our total savings is used to finance national investment and the current account balance. Okay, our national savings is used to finance the investment or national investment plus what? Current account. Now let's go back to our slides. So the derivation is what I just did, okay? The derivation is what I just did. So we have, remember when we added the two, we had something like this, Y, my plus NFP minus C minus G1. This is the one here basically means like equation one because we wanted to do something again to eight. Okay, so that's what we had here. We try expanding this. So we said Y plus NFP minus C minus G is equals to, you know that Y I told you is GDP and GDP is made up of C plus I plus G plus NX plus N the NFP is not flat, okay? You remember the NFP, we had it from here. Okay, so don't get confused. Then we try doing some basic calculation. We just took this C off. We took this C also off. We took this G off. We took this G also off. And we had something beautiful like this, okay? We had the savings function to be S equals to I plus NX plus NFP. And I told you that anytime we have I plus NF plus NX, NFP plus NX, we, we call it what? The current account. Okay, so that's what we have here. The summation of the NX and the NFP is called the current account balance. Okay, so we've got to put this in mind. What does this savings mean? And I, I, I remember I told you not long ago, I said this equation states that the national savings are used to finance national investment and current account balance. Okay, so someone would also ask, what is current account? Current account basically means the excess of national savings over investment. We can prove this, okay? We can prove this. If I want to make current account um, the subject here, I'm going to get CA equals to S minus I, right? So meaning this current account here is the excess of it. And we are expecting to get a positive figure. That's why we are saying it's an excess, okay, of the national savings over investment. Just make C the subject, C the subject here, and you get S minus I, okay? So that is basically all for, ah, uh, what you supposed to know? and uh, national income accounting. There is news. But before I proceed, uh, do, uh, is someone here confused with the derivation that you would want me to go over or ask a question up to this point? Hello, sir. This I lost contact. So can you go over the derivation, please? All right. So. It's my pleasure, okay? I'll do that. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay. So I'm gonna clean all of this. Should I clean it or I should just explain using it? Explain using it, please. All right. So, we said that we wanted to know, come again. We said that we wanted to know the private savings formula. And we said the private savings formula is Y plus NFP plus TR plus interest minus taxes minus consumption. Okay. And we said also said that these are in your slides. Okay. And we also said that the S government 
is taxes minus total revenue and transfer payments minus interest. Okay. And I remember I explained that we are not adding these expenses to this because they are assumed not to bring any goods and services to us. Okay. Now, if you deduct this from this, you get the total revenue for government. Okay. Or the net revenue for government. If you take the expenses, the leftover is what government is going to save. Now, we said that savings or total savings is equal to the S private plus the S government. So it means I have to merge these two equations, this and this, okay? This and this equation. So that is what I basically did. I copied all of this. That is what is here up to here, okay? Then I just added, remember, the T here, it's not negative, it's plus. So I just, and aside that, we said it's plus here. Okay, so I just brought the plus here. Then I added this whole one. And when you do that, it makes life very simple for you. You could see we have negative year, negative year. It can take this positive and positive year. We have positive tax here, we have negative tax here. So that is basically what I just did here. And I had the whole of this. Okay, and I had the whole of this. Now, if you get, I, I remember I told you that this Y here is the GDP, okay? And we said the GDP is made up of four components, which is the C plus I plus G plus NX, okay? Then I continued with this side, NFP minus C minus G. Now, if I expand this, you could see the C is positive here, C is negative, they cancel out. G is positive year, G is negative year. They also cancel out. And again, again, four. Okay, so that's basically what I, I was trying to do. Now, if I cancel these two out, you see how the, the rest of my story will be the I, which was not canceled, plus the NX plus the NFP. The rest are canceled. So, we are saying that our total savings is now equals to what? I plus NX plus NFP. Okay. And I, I told you that in economics or macroeconomics to be precise, if I say I plus NX plus NFP, this side is known as current account. Okay. Current account. So basically our total savings formula now becomes what I'm underlining, I'm, I'm circling here. Okay, I plus what? Um, CA. Please, are you cool with the derivation? Certainly. Yes, please. Okay. Yes. So, so can you check your chat? Um, Yasin. So, please, yes, I wanted to ask that. So, assuming you're calculating for total savings, you can use either equation one or two. Well, you're supposed to use it to either equation one or to this one. No, the no, the ST, the one that starts with Y, Y plus okay. Let or me share the last that screen. one. All right, I'm sharing that screen. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you were asking, can we use this or that? No, yeah, can we use this one? The first one, the one that has one by it. Or the second the one that has two by it's the equation two or the equation one. Okay. After so, the, like after you've done the cancellation and everything. All right. So Yasmin, Yasmin, right? Yes. The yes. moment you do the cancellation, this y won't be noted anymore. If you remember, if you do the cancellation, it means you've you've actually expanded this. Okay. You've actually what expanded this, and if you expand this, we will have four components in it. So at the end of the day, after the expansion, you get something like this. Oh, you can only yeah. use this equation. You can only use this equation if you really understand the why. Oh, okay, I get it. So yes, the because equation two is a more simpler version. Yeah. Basically, basically. Thank you. You're welcome. So any other question? Can I proceed to train? 
deficit. Sir, please can you check your chart? My your chart. My tab. Chat. Please I sent a message to you directly. So please can you check it? All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Thank you, sir. Johnson, Johnson, right? Yes, please. All right. Johnson. It's an honor. I'll do that. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. What will you do? Guys, calm down. I'm searching for Johnson. Hey. Are you plotting a coup? Ah, uh, we are coming to overtake you. <laughs> All right. Okay, Johnson. Yes, sir. It's done, right? Uh, yes, um, not yet, please. Oh, then my story is, my destiny is deceiving me. I think I've done Okay, it. then let me raise my hand up. Oh, I've done, I, I did it for different Johnson. Okay. Has it come? Uh, no, not yet, please. Has come on. Yes, please. Has come now. Thank you, sir. All right, you're welcome. So, guys, we are proceeding. Twin deficit. Okay. Uh, deficit that is twin. Okay. I'm going to four. <laughs> so, when we say twin deficit, it basically the relationship between the government budget deficit and the current account deficit. And when do you think we would have a current account deficit? When do you think, using this equation, when do you think we'll have a current account deficit? When net export is added to national NFP. We will have deficit. And current. Okay, so we would have current account when this two is, this, this condition is satisfied. But what, what I'm saying is, when are we going to get a current account deficit? And when we say deficit, you, should, you understand, right? No. Please, do you understand deficit? No, please. Anyone here who can help us? Uh, yeah, I understand deficit. I'm okay. going or shortcoming. But, but, but then uh, I want to get a question clear again. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, when do you think using this equation, using this equation, the one I've highlighted here, when do you okay. think we can have a current account mm -hmm. deficit? But okay, so I'll that, try. Okay, try, Asin, right? Okay, Abigail. When, when, sir, in the so excess of the national uh, excess of investments over national savings. Thank you very much. Okay, when we invest more than what we can save, we we'll have a deficit. You remember I told you that. Now let's try and do this small calculation. Okay, it doesn't hurt to do more calculation. Okay, it doesn't really hurt. Okay, so I'm trying to. Clear this man. You know, last week, the president told you guys that this course, if you don't learn, it can mafia you. And truth be told, this is the course you guys get more F. It's English plus mathematics, but the F is just unbearable. Okay, you know, micro accounts, it's a bit quantitative and people like math. This is a bit widely kind of um, course, but it's not really scary, okay? You can pass. People get A every day. People also get F every day, so you can pass. What did we say? We said the savings is what? Equals to I plus 
CA, sorry, CA. Now, when do we get deficits? We are saying, let's say if you have income and expenditure, if your expenses are more than your income, you get deficit, basically. And that is what we know. Let's say you have two cities and you go and borrow some, you go and buy something that is three cities. You will get into a problem, okay? You need to go and borrow extra one CD. And you borrowing, it's because you are in deficit. That's why you are borrowing, okay? And Ghana, our budget has never been surplus. It has always been deficit, meaning our expenditure is more than our income. Okay, so now let's see. If this man is higher than this man, we'll get a deficit. This will become negative. If you like, let's try and see. We want to make this negative, meaning we can bring negative CA equals to what? I minus S. So this is what we are saying, current account budget deficit. Oh, I didn't have my Kafra. Okay. So that is what we are saying, what current account deficit. When this man becomes negative, meaning you are investing more than you can save. Okay, so you get, or you become, uh, unless you go and borrow, okay, to, to make life simple for the average Ghanaian man. Okay. So what is the whole idea about this deficit, 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 okay? We are just going to learn the relationship between government budget deficits where our expenditure exceeds our revenue, okay? And the current account deficit, the relationship between these two. You remember we said the current account is the essence of what? Our savings and investment, okay? So the essence of it gives us the current account surplus. So what happens if we have a deficit? Okay, so we are just going to do some small calculations again. And this we have to prove again. So before I even introduce the slides, let's go and try some small proof. And it's good to try this with me. If you don't understand, we are not in the classroom. And remember, in the classroom, they don't get time for you. If we try getting time for each other or everyone, we won't make progress. So this is the time, we are not rushing. Okay, so let's come here and try the proven. Okay. So, For us to know if we have a deficit, we usually use the GNP, okay? We use GNP because we want to deal with Ghanaians and not foreigners. So everything Ghanaian is what we are interested in, okay? So this time around, the Y that I'm presenting here is not GDP anymore. It is what? GNP, okay? And we said GNP is equals to what? C plus I plus J, sorry, plus J plus NX, okay, plus NFP. Okay, so that is GMP formula for here. Okay, if I try to make small, small adjustments, I can try, because I want the government side to take precedence or be alone, I would want to group like terms here. Okay, so I'm going to say Y uh, minus C minus what? I is equals to J plus NFP. Sorry. Remember, we said that the consumption is made by individual households. And this investment is businesses undertaking investment. So I want to group all the businesses at one side and I'll group um, government also at one side, okay? All right, so I left one thing. 
Lydia, I'm listening. Uh, about the NX. Yeah, I, I, I get added it. I just noticed I didn't bring it. Okay. So if I want to make it a bit, uh, Yasin. So you just said that you hope the government has one side in bed. I wanted to know how you, how you are doing it, like the group thing. Oh, basically, I brought the NX and the NFP to the other side. Okay. NX is the net export. Okay. So very soon you will learn something about closed economy and open economy. So if we have a closed economy, you will notice that there will be nothing like net export. Okay. So usually we assume that the export, the net export is usually dealt with the government. Okay. So I'm trying to find my way to bring this G and this side, all this side at one point. Okay. And all this side, at another point. So that's basically what I've done here. Are we cool? So you said the net export is, is dealt with by the government. What about the net factor in payments? That's why, uh, can you see this side? This is G, government. Yeah, this, no, this, I'm just asking if that one is like dealt by the government from what you are saying. Yes, please. Basically, you know, this is done, net factor payment is usually strike down by the Ghana Revenue Authority, which is basically like government doing something. Anything that has government, Ghana in it, you should know it's government staff, right? Okay, thank you. So basically all that we want to do is to- So um, please, how did you get the, the NFP plus the NX to get the CA? Yes, please. This plus this will give us this, the CA. Okay. We are cool, right? Yes, very cool. Good. So what we are trying to do is to uh, find the, the, the deficit, okay? How to get the deficit. And government itself takes like, he, he accept the taxes and we pay the taxes. So we are going to subtract both sides, okay, by T. There is an economic intuition behind this, okay? But don't worry your head plenty if you don't really get it. Just get how it is done, okay? So I'm going to say Y minus C, okay? Minus T minus I. It's equals to, we are taking, we are subtracting T from both sides. So G plus CA minus T. These are equal. Okay. Don't really, don't really think plenty. Now, I know you guys are thinking. Don't think plenty. When I look at this side, this looks like S private. Who can also see that? I can see that too. You can see that. Eh? Who can also see that? Okay, so all that is here is when you produce and you take out what you can consume and you take out your, your taxes, it's like this is basically the main expenditure we incur. Okay, so if I take this expenditures from it, okay, the rest will be like what I'm left to save. And because I told you I was grouping government and private, you could see that this, is, this can be government. This will only be what, private. Okay. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Now, so I, I want to let the same thing happen here. So that we will see S government also here. Now, but before I can do this, I think I have to do another thing again. Okay, let me clean this side. Then we will do it again. Okay, so now I have Y minus C minus T minus I equal to, now this is what I want to do. I want to make sure uh, this man and this man, they come together. So I'm going to say CA 
minus bracket open T minus G. Who is lost? Okay, I know you are lost, but if I multiply negative T, negative one by T, I'll get negative T here. And if I do negative, negative, I'll get this positive G. So I've not changed anything here, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. So this side, oh, please, this is not equal to, eh? it's my hand. Okay, so this side, can you see that it looks like S government, this is total revenue minus so government expenditure. Yes, it does. Thank yes, you Yes, please. Much. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is just for you to understand the deficit that sometimes we create. So I'm going to say, I remember I told you this side is S private. So S private minus I is equals to what? C A minus C minus G. Okay, so the last expression, basically, if I wanna, now we said that what? If the private savings equals private investment, then CA is equals to what? Government budget deficit. Okay, what we are trying to say is, if this private savings, if I should bring this I here, okay, we are going to see private savings being equal to this. Then we can confidently also say that this side, okay, this side, the other side, which is this whole side, okay. I'll take it back again if you don't get it, okay, don't worry. So we are going to say that definitely, since we can make this inference here that S private is equals to the investment, if I decide to bring the investment here, we can also say that this side can be. C minus G equals to what? C A. Right? Right? Yes. Who is confused? Okay, we said this Ooh, SP. Confused. <laughs> if we decide to say this is equals to I, then we can make that inference. Okay, inference that this whole thing, we can just take the whole of this, also bring it here. Then we will say C A is equals to T minus G. Who is lost? Very lost. So lost. In the wilderness. <laughs> All right. So let's oh, take sure. the whole idea again. What we are trying to say is twin deficit just shows the relationship between what the private investment. Okay. It shows the relationship between our government budget deficit and what our current account deficit. Okay, how do we show this? We can only show this using the GNP because we are dealing with Ghanaians. So this is the GNP formula, the whole of this. Okay, then all that I did was to group like terms. Okay, this is how it is done actually in economics. This, but we have intuition behind this. So I only grouped I brought this C and this I to this side, and I grouped the whole of this also on another side, which is what I've done here. And I think you understand up to this side, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Good. Then what I did again is I took minus, I just subtracted T from both sides. Okay. And the T, it's an implicit statement of which I told you not to force your mind to understand. Okay. So I took T from both sides, here and here. Just to create S private and S government. That's why we took this T in a layman's view. Okay, so I just took T from here, T from here. And I not you notice that the whole of this looks like S private. Okay, and we said S government is total revenue. A taxes minus what? You know, total revenue is the same as government taxes, minus our transfer payments, minus our interest, all into brackets minus G. This time, we don't have anything like transfer payments and interest. So how do we get our savings? If my revenue is taxes minus my government spending, 
then if I did like this, I'll sh I should get S government, right? S government, meaning I would have what? A negative equation here, okay? If I multiply this, you could see that revenue is what? Negative. So if revenue is negative, making this a deficit, if you can see, if revenue is negative, making this what? A deficit. And that is the whole idea about um, this budget deficit. Okay, so as private, and this is where we make the inferences. This is where we make the inferences. We are saying that if this is S private minus I, okay, if I want to find the private side, I can say that S private is equal to what? Investment. S private is equal to what? Investment, meaning I bring this I here. That is what I was trying to make. Okay, so don't look at this side. If you like, close your eyes. Pretend as if you can't see this, this guy. And let's deal with this person. We can say that the S private here, if I move this I here, S private to be equal to what? I. I can equally do the same thing to this side. We pretend like we can't see this man to here. If I move the whole of this equation here, you will see that you would have what? This will now be positive, right? If I move the whole of this here, this will be positive. So we'll have T minus G equals to what? C A. Please, can you see that? Yes. Yes, yeah, so you when you get to this side and you want to make the inferences, close your eyes on one and deal with one. Then you close your eyes on Um, I don't know who he's talking about. I think your network is very bad. So say, please, can the other side be zero? Which other side? If you want to ignore the other side, can it be zero so that you can be able to solve? You know, we if you could remember the circular flow diagram, we, we explained two macroeconomic agents trying to interact. Okay, so we can basically say we have an economy without government. We can also say we have an economy without private people being inside, okay? Just that we want to show some small analogy that indicates that we could have current account deficit, okay? We could have current account deficit and we could also have what? A negative investment or negative savings. That is the whole idea. Okay, so this is basically government trying to, can you see something here? This side, look at this side. This is government what? This is government, let's say government budget. This doesn't look like a deficit, okay? If it was a deficit, this would have been negative, then this would have been what? Positive, meaning this is dominating this. And this looks like our current account. So you could see that we have this T minus C, and CA. So this side is the government budget, and this side is the current account. And this is what the twin deficit does. It shows the relationship between these two. And for us to get the relationship, we have to go through all this to get to this side. And if you could remember, I told you government budget deficit. Okay, when we say government budget, it's made up of revenues and expenditure. Okay, and this is government revenue, and this is government expenses. So this is the budget, right? And when we look at the current account, looking at the formula, so we generated to this side, you could see that this is the current account as well. So the twin budget deficit is just showing the relationship between these two. Okay, so, so we're not looking at the S no, 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 no. We are not minus investment. Not, You're just looking at. Yes, this is the main idea of the derivation of the formula. Oh, this okay. is all that we are looking for. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sir, so this please, can I ask you to find the derivative of uh, what you are doing? Oh, calm down. Derivative there, we, we've not gotten there. We will do uh, differentiation, small differentiation when we are doing aggregate demand, which mm -hmm. won't hurt. 
I think this so far so good. This is the only part in the course that is a bit tricky. And if you get this side, I think the rest will be fine. Okay. We won't really do any differentiation for here. Okay. Um, yes, please. Can you go to the CA minus C minus G and how you said it looks like the um, S government? Okay, so what we are trying to say. Uh, please, I just go over for the last. Okay, let me do that. Hey, you guys don't want us to do that. Do you I'm just to go over for the last time. Yeah, I'm doing that. Okay, so the government budget deficit, this is what it does. It shows the relationship between the government budget deficit. Hey, sorry, the twin deficit shows the relationship between the government budget deficit and the current account, okay? So we just want to create a formula that would combine these two together, okay? We just want to create a formula that will combine these two. So we first use the GNP. We are using GNP because of the word NFP here. If not the NFP would have used GDP. But because account, that is why we are using NFP here. Okay, or the GNP. So when you get to know your GNP, just group like this. Take the G and NX plus NFP to one side, then take the, the C and the I to the other side. This only happens in twin deficit. Now, when you are done, subtract T from both sides. Okay, so looking at here, you can see that I'm taking T from both sides. So I just did Y minus C minus T. You know, I didn't bring the T here because I didn't want you guys to get confused. I just needed this side to look like a savings function. Okay, so then I also took T from this side. Then I tried to manipulate this to look like S savings. There's not five for it's T, okay? Okay, forgive me about my horrible... Um, so this is T, okay? So I just, we just ha want to, to let you guys know that we can see private savings here. We are saying private because of the word consumption here. Okay, consumption is done by the individuals. Okay, the private individuals. All right, then we could also see T minus G also here, meaning that we could also have government total revenue minus government, total expenditure also here. Meaning if I deduct this from this, government is what? The, the amount left is what government is going to save. But there is a negative something attached to that amount, meaning it's a deficit, okay? Meaning it's a deficit. Now, if we come here, if we come here, we are saying that the whole of this is S private. S private minus I, we just want to make an inference. If we decide to close our eyes on this guy, we can conclude that S private is the same as what? I. Okay. If we decide to close our... Okay, Nyante, I'm coming. If we decide to close our eyes here, we could make an inference that S private, okay, is equals to I. But we are not interested in this S private. What we are interested is in is we want to create a function that would combine both the government budget deficit or government budget and current account. Okay, so since we can make this inference here, we can also make the same inference here. Okay, that's closing this guy, closing our eyes on this guy, we could make an inference that this side, we could say, um, T, oh, Kafra, we could make an inference that T minus J, okay, is equals to CA. And when you look at this T, it's total government revenue, taxes, minus G. So this looks like government budget. And I told you the government budget is made up of what? Uh, total revenue minus total expenditure. Of course, in Ghana, we've always had deficits. Okay, at the end of the day, we get negative figure. Then the current account. So this is what we term as a twin deficit. 
So Nyantechi, you were asking something. The whole closing your eyes on one and subtracting, in, uh, bringing invisible teeth or subtracting them, is there a reason behind those? So you just have to do no. it? Yes, actually, there is a reason. But because you guys are not economic students, we don't really want to bother you guys. Okay, but so you first. It's really confusing. If you don't bother, yeah. I'm just getting confused. <laughs> Okay, so uh let's take it cool. Okay. Can we please get just the reason and then maybe we'll be okay with it? Okay, so the layman's reason is to that we are taking this TT here just for us to get an equation which looks like this. It's like here, yeah, this T becomes our taxes we are paying. If I'm taking my consumption and my taxes, the leftover is what I'm, I'm supposed to save, right? So that's why we are doing this minus T here. And we just want to get our S government also here. If government is making this total revenue and he's deducting government's expenses, the leftover here, okay, the leftover here is what government is supposed to save, which is usually a deficit. That's why we have the negative here. Okay, so this TT in layman's view is just to create this formula, S private and the S government. Okay, so that we can make our inferences from there. Okay. Okay, it makes a little bit of sense. Yes, so- In the final like formula, you said okay. that in, so said that in budget deficit is can, way can like one person you come again? You said that government's budget deficit You said that government deficit is when expenditure exceeds revenue. So why is it, why isn't it that um, the government like why the T, why shouldn't the T be negative instead and then the C A two be negative since you said that the Deficit is when the investments or the CM, CM, rev, expenditure exceeds like revenue or the this one. Okay, the savings. So, okay, Yasin, right? You're the one talking. Yes. Okay, so Yasin, you could see that this T was already negative here. And we manipulated it to get this positive T. And if you could, you are following very well. I told you that this is government's total revenue. And if we take this negative G, which is government spending from it, at the end of the day, even if we get positive figure here, this negative would affect this, making the whole of this a, a deficit, right? Yes. Do you remember? Yes, I remember. Good. But because we want you to yes. understand that there is a relationship between the twin deficit and the current account, hey, the budget deficit and the current account. That is why we said we are not really interested in this side. Okay. We are not interested in this side, but this helped us to make the inference that if this can be equal to I, then we can also make change of subjects here to get this. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, so this is the government budget side, and this is the current account side, and this is what we call the twin deficit. Yes, Thank you. You're welcome. Please, are we cool? Can we, can we proceed? Yes, please. Okay. So you don't worry. When we see this in a question, you will notice that they don't really, really ask you guys to prove. But a case where we are asked to prove, we, we would do the same thing again, over and over, with time you will understand, okay? All right. Okay, so, yeah. All right, so let me share the slides. The next slide we are moving to is lecture three, and I wouldn't want to go into economic good today with you, okay? But there is this small cap. So this is economic growth. Okay, we will do it in lecture three. I just wanted to do one and two and do the tutorials with you.
okay so that you have a best or better understanding of what we do or what so you guys need to understand this side okay before i even start with the tutorials we need to really understand this side now we are going to make calculations on this so the question can sometimes ask you what is real gdp so we have two types of gdp real and nominal gdp okay so we are saying that real gdp measures the actual physical volume okay actual fiscal volume of economic activities or activity okay so if we produce okay if we produce the produce not the monetary part of it the product itself that we've produced we measure it and when we are trying to measure it we call it real gdp so this measure is you know i told you you can't add um cars to robbers or cars to iphones okay so we try to freeze the prices of the product so we don't really really exclude the changes in price when it comes to real gdp it's like our, what we produce we just add all the prices okay then we term it as what real gdp so we don't consider if there is a price change in the next year or this year we don't really consider it okay so we say this real gdp is real gdp at constant prices so it measures only the fiscal volume of economic activity at constant prices that is all about real gdp then the nominal gdp talks about the cd value of what all economic activities this one takes in, into consideration both the changes in both the physical quantity and the prices but the real gdp okay takes into consideration only the changes in price the quantity and not the price okay so we'll do some small calculation even in this slide for you to have um so we are saying that we stated here that the difference between growth of nominal and real GDP is solely or due to changes in price. Remember, we are saying this because real GDP doesn't really consider the price changes, but nominal GDP considers the price changes and the quantity as well. Real GDP is only interested in the quantity and not really the changes in price. Nominal does the two. So if there is a difference between these two, the difference is only the price change. Please, are you on the same platform? Yeah, please, can you take it? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's try something with an example. Okay, you would get it. So assume the economy of Ghana produces only kilole and pure water. Our goal is to compare GDP between 2010 and 2014. Okay, so you could see something here. This is, in exams, they will ask you to calculate for nominal GDP 2010 and real GDP 2010. Then nominal GDP 2014 and real GDP 2014. Okay, so, we see that the 2010 now becomes the base year for both of them, okay? So if I ask you to calculate for nominal GDP for 2010, it's just multiply the price times the quantity plus the price of this times the quantity of this, okay? So when I multiply this, I'll get 150. When I multiply this, I'll get, that is why we have this total of 250. And in the base year, the real GDP and the nominal GDP are the same. The, 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 the figures are usually the same. Because if I ask you to calculate for real GDP 2010, there is no, we are not going to consider any price changes, okay? So we are still going to say real GDP is also 15 times, which will get to 50, the same thing, okay? And when we go to 2014, this is where we consider changes. Okay, so in 2014, you could see that 
the quantity for and the price has also increased to 15 and 60 for pure water and 2.5 for what, um, pure water as well. So this is the prices, okay, where we have the Ghana city. And these are the quantity we produced. The quantity, these are the prices, okay? So if I multiply this, I'm going to get 300, okay? 200, 20 times 15, you get 300. Then 60 times 2.5, you get 150. So that is it. But if we ask you to calculate for real GDP, this is the change, okay? Real GDP will only assume the new changes in quantity, but we won't consider the price. We'll still use the price of for 2010. That's why we are saying GDP at constant prices. So in 2014, the only thing we are going to do is to check the quantity and not the price. So if you can see these prices are the same as the prices in 2010. And that is the only difference between um, real GDP and nominal GDP. This considers both the quantity change and the price change. But real GDP considers only the quantity change and not the price change. Okay, so for the base year, which is 2010, they both use the same price, the same quantity. But when we move to the next year, they don't really consider the price change. That is for real GDP, but for nominal GDP, we consider the price change. Please, are we cool? Yes, sir. Yes, please. Can you, can you go over, please? All right. So real GDP, nominal GDP. So for nominal GDP, we are saying it measures what the CD value of our economic activities. And that's what we've stated here. Then real GDP measures okay. actual fiscal quantity or fiscal volume. So you see, this one is interested in the quantity we are producing and not the price. But this one is both interested in the quantity and the price. So we are saying real GDP is a GDP at constant, constant prices, okay? Excludes changes in price. And we tried using an example here. And the example is saying that our okay. goal is to compare GDP between 2010 and 2014. Okay, so... Um, I think we have to. Should we do this manually? Yes, please. Yep. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. Okay, so first, the question said we should calculate what GDP for. So we are doing for Kilowoli and what? Pure water. So the first one is nominal GDP, nominal and real. So I'm just doing this. So I would say here is 2010. Okay, so in 2010, this is how we calculate it. It's going to be the 15, okay? Remember the quantity we produced for nominal was 15 times what? 10, right? Plus um, 50 times two. Okay, so if I add the whole of this, I'm going to get 250. Then for real GDP, the same thing in 2010, the same thing happens. Okay, it's going to be the 15 because there is no change times 10 plus 50 times two. So this is what I was trying to tell you that 
for the base GDP. Now, for 2014, okay, for 2014, there was a change. So the change was what we produced from 15 to 20, and the price also changed to what 15 plus 60 times what 2.5. And when you add the whole of the whole of this, you get what? Um, four fifty. Now, this is where the changes come. In twenty fourteen, for real GDP, let me realize. In twenty fourteen, for real GDP, we don't we are not interested in the price changes here. This two point five and the two here we are still going to use the base year price, which is the 10 and the two, but the quantities will change, okay? So what is the quantity? We produced 20 in 2014, but we are still using the price of what? 2010 as the base, because we are not interested in the changes in price. Then this time we produce 60 here times two, two. okay? So 20 times 10 will give us 200. Then 60 times two will give us what, 120. The whole of this will give us 320. Real GDP and nominal GDP. So this side considers what? The changes in price and the changes in quantity. This side only considers what? Changes in quantity only and not the price. So we still use the base year. No matter the number of items there, you use the base year for this all time. Are we cool? Yes. Good. The next question. So in the exams, you see something like this. The questions have always been a repetitive kind of question. Okay. So the next question they will ask you in the example above, which is the pure time accumulate, what is the growth rate of nominal GDP between 2010 and 2014? So they are asking for the growth rate. Now it was 250, it came to 450. What is the growth rate? We want to know the growth rate. And how do we find a change or a growth rate? So we are going to say that the percentage change in this, you know, in macroeconomics, micro, you guys did, if you want to find a change, you said new minus old over old times 100, right? So we are going to say the change is 450 minus the 250. So this is the new, 2014 new, then 2010 old, okay, new minus old all over old, old, which is 250 times 100, okay, which is okay. about 80%, okay, so this grew up about 80%, then we would ask you to find the change for real GDP2 as well, and looking at this, what is it, we could see that um, the oh the new one so the percentage change is going to be what 320 minus 250 all over 250 times 100 okay which is also 28 percent okay so that is basically or usually the question they ask you now they would also ask you what causes the change in this what causes the change in this? And as we said, the, usually the change is caused by what? The price. But this time we can't only really say it's caused by the price because quantity also increased as the price were also what? Increasing. Okay. So you, if you get this, then we can move to our... Let's get to the slides. Okay, so this is what we just did. This is what we just did. That's it. It's not really difficult. So if we ask you what is the growth rate change? Okay, so from 2010 to 2014, what is the change? Then you do new minus old, all over old times 100. Then you do the same thing new. I remember I told you, looking at your slide, maybe you'll get confused, but real GDP, 
and nominal GDP are the same in the base year. Okay. And that is what I just did up there. 50 minus 250, all over 250 times 100, which gave us a 28%. So that is basically the whole idea about GDP. Okay. Lydia. Sir, please, so I try and see that the change is caused by price and quantity. So looking at this question, you could see that, right? You could see that quantity also increased. Yes, okay. please. But the sole change is usually done by the price because this one doesn't care about the price change. But it considers the quantity. But you can see quantity also increased. If we had left this at what 15, we would have still got into 50. We are now having 320. So the quantity also contributed to the change. Do you get it? Yes, please. Thank you. So um we have something called GDP deflator. Okay. And GDP deflator is under a broad category called price indexes. And you did this thing. Okay, you guys are now doing business math. Okay, so I can't ask you that. So in business math, you learn about price indices. Okay, and we said price indexes is a measure of the average level of prices for a specified set of goods and services relative to the prices in a specified base year. Okay, so um, we are not going to really, really, I would, we will do this again in inflation. So I'm not going to stress too much here. Okay, we will do price indexes in inflation because that is what is used to calculate for inflation. Okay. Edit. Edit. Okay, so let's proceed. So we are not going to really, really spend much time on price indexes, but what we are trying to do is um, price index, a uh, GDP deflator is like a subset of price indexes. Okay, and we are saying GDP deflator measures what the overall level of price of goods and services included in what the GDP. And these are some common definitions you can just memorize, okay? Yeah, you can just memorize. Now, let's see the formula for GDP deflator. In exams, we would ask you to calculate GDP deflator. And we said that GDP deflator is equal to the nominal GDP all over real GDP times 100. Okay, so we'll give you a year that you should calculate the GDP deflator for. So the question can tell you, calculate the GDP deflator for 2010. Then you should know it's 250 over 250 times 100, of which we are going to get 100%. Usually for the GDP deflator for the base year, it's always 100%. Then we would ask you to calculate the same thing for 2014, which is going to be nominal GDP, with which we had 450 all over 320 times 100. Please, if you want us to do this manually, you can tell me, okay? But I think it's easy to understand. That's why I'm not doing it. But if you want it, you can just tell me, okay? So let's do it. Manually, eh? Yes, please. All right. I'm at your service. Okay, so let me clear this. Okay, so we are asking you to calculate for um, the one who said we should do it. Can you give me the formula for GDP deflator? GDP nominal over GDP real times 100. That's perfect, okay. So we are saying that GDP, the deflator, 
is equal to the nominal all over the real times 100. Now, looking at 2014, what is our nominal? Our nominal was what? 450, right? 450. All over 250 times 100. Okay. And yeah, this all one, over 320. Hey, sorry. Thank you. All right, so that is our real GDP in 2014, 320. And this is going to give us what? 140.63%. So that's all. Okay. That is all. So now we can also ask you guys, Okay, let me share the other screen. Come again. Okay, so the price indices we didn't do. It has Sir, two times. Please, I was asking if. Gift, can you type it in the chat box? Because I think your network is very bad. Okay, so I think all right, so they said I should check my chat. It is I'm checking it, but I can't see anything there. Okay, so you can type it when it comes out, I'll, I'll check it. Okay. So Price indexes have two main types. Okay, we have the consumer price indices and the producer price indices. And I think in microeconomics, you did all those stuff. These are all factor, tools that we can use to um, calculate inflation. And now we can also use GDP deflator. So I remember most of your questions, they will ask you, what are some of the tools for calculating inflation? Give us three. And because we know consumer, then producer, then GDP deflator, we are expecting the answer. Okay, we are expecting the answer. So please, you can note that somewhere, that GDP deflator, consumer price index, and co producer price index can be used to calculate for GM inflation. Okay, so... But more, last one is we use the consumer price index for the producer, producer price index. Okay, so I was asking before you get your GDP deflator, are you supposed to own oh, it depends on the question, okay? Gifty, it depends on the question. So it's not like you have to do the growth rate. Sometimes we won't even ask you to calculate the growth rate. So first, you know your nominal and your real GDP. I think you are good to go. Okay, you are good to go. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, you're welcome. Okay, so... Now, we usually use the price in, consumer price index to Martha. Sir, please, with yes. a good rate, is it the difference between the real and the nominal that's the answer, or just the percentages you get for each? The percentages are the answer. Okay, thank so you. Those percentages, which is this, okay means that 
uh, this percentages basically means that uh, your real GDP, your nominal GDP grew by 80% from 2010 to 2014. You get it. And this real GDP grew by what? 28%. This is because real GDP doesn't consider the price change. Okay, if it had considered, then we wouldn't have even have the difference because they would have all gotten the same values. Do you get it? Yes, please. Yeah. So now let's quickly wrap up this. Okay, I think. Avoiding the tutorial set. Okay, so now, as I told you, we will do all these things again in, in how it is used to calculate GDP. It is the current price minus the previous price all over the previous price times quantity uh, times hundred. Okay, so if I do this, this is kind of PT is the old price. So this one would download something we call the newsletter from the Ghana Statistical Service website to use for the calculation. So I don't want you to stress, just that I want you to know we have three ways of calculating GDP, okay? A GDP deflator, a inflation, sorry, which is the producer price index, consumer price index, and the GDP deflator itself, okay? Now, I would want to stop here real nominal GDP would basically ask for the definition and the formula, okay? This formula, usually this is what we ask for. So when we say real interest rates, real interest rates, when we say interest rates even in general, is the rate of return promised by a borrower to a lender. So if you decide to borrow my money today and I tell you, Yantechi, I'm going to take 10% as interest on this money, money you've borrowed, that 10% is what we call the interest rate. Oh, okay. Auntie Chi, I didn't tell you to come and borrow from you. I was using your. I also. I was waiting. Okay. That, is, that 10% is the interest rate we are talking of. Now, we are saying that real, real interest rate on assets, okay, is the rate at which the real value of the asset increases of, over time. Okay, so if you are using an asset and the, that asset uh, keeps giving you positive cash flow, okay, then we are saying that there is um, a real interest rate on that asset, okay? So it's continuously, okay, increases over time. The value of it increases over time, okay? Then the nominal interest rate just looks at the nominal, the, the, the CD value of it, okay? So looking at the definition of interest rate, that 10% you pay on that money, let's say I give you 100 Ghana, that, that 10 CD you pay on that 100 Ghana is the nominal interest rate we are talking about here. Okay, good. Now, this is the formula. If I ask you to calculate for the real interest rate, we are saying that it is what? The nominal interest rate minus, ah, uh, Inflation, okay, and this inflation is unexpected. In inflation, okay, so this formula you can just expected inflation. We are done for today. One or one, one, two over one, one, two. Just have a feel of. Um, the tutorial set, how it looks like, okay? Just have a feel of it. It's not really difficult. This course is cuckoo crap. It's a to you. Cuckoo crap. Cuckoo crap. Ask the president. Ask Nyantichi. Ah, you ask Nyantichi. He will tell you. It's cuckoo crap. He's a shop. You see, this is what I was telling you. So you see, we, we just do, dealt with this, okay? They are asking you what percentage change. And I remember I taught you how to get this percentage change, okay? So this is basically how the tutorial sets are, okay? So you see, when I ask you to calculate for GDP, 
last time I told you, if we take consumption, you should know those three components that are in consumption. And you remember I told you we have durable, non-durable, and what? And what? Service. And Service. So you see, we've Service. displaced it. Okay, we've we've made we've made this manya manya, but it's not difficult. If I know durable, you can see durable here. You can see service here. You can see non-durable here. If you add these three, you get something we call consumption. Now I remember I talk, I we spoke about investment as well. We have business fixed investments, residential investment, and what inventory, right? You see, yes. Yeah, there is no inventory. That doesn't mean these two, when we add it, we won't get investment. So you just can just add these two, you get investment. So you see, if you don't know all this, you can't do this work. Okay, so please take the information we gave you seriously. Now, I remember I told you guys that, uh, can you see? Can you see? Yes. Okay, yes, you can. Yeah, I know you can see now. I'm. I don't know. I'm trying to do some shakara to see yeah. if you see proper. Okay, so listen to the questions very carefully. You remember I told you that in the definition of GDP, if we didn't produce the GDP this year, you don't add it. We only need. Yes, we. Yes, you did. We only need market value. We only need final goods and services. It should be within our mm -hmm. geographical boundaries, right? Now, let's go through this question. Yes, sir. Component. You see, we have four components of the GDP. We are asking you, what component of the GDP, if any? So there could be a question with no components. Would each of the following transactions affect so it can affect consumption, it can affect investment, it can affect net export, it can affect what? Um, government spending, right? So you have to explain. That is why I told you in this exam, this is how the exams will come. If you like, check the past question. This whole thing is past question. Everything is a past question. Okay, so what component of GDP, if any, would each of the following transaction affect? Explain. Can Tanka Automobile sell a car from its inventory, what component do you think this would affect? Gross domestic private investment. And why? Thank but you very much. I'm taking private. So you, you are not supposed to. You are not supposed to tell us. Uh, just tell us investment. Then explain why are you saying it to affect investment. Please, can I try? Yes, try. Okay, because inventories are under um, investment and the inventories are, the inventories produced but not sold or those sold within the next year, within the year, with uh, those produced but not sold within the year. Okay, thank you very much. So, you know, this is why I told you guys to really understand the question. So what she said, inventory is correct, but the answer is wrong. GDP. We said if the thing has already been put, okay, we said Antanka Automobile sells a car from its inventory. Meaning this won't affect our We are assuming that the production has been done. We are not going to work. Of course, what she said was correct. Inventory um, should affect our investment, but it doesn't affect this current GDP. Do you get it? Small. Family, do you get it? So this will not affect our current GDP. The car was not produced in the current period. But overall, so in the exams, you can just tell us this. This will not affect our current GDP because of the word inventory inside. 
meaning it has been produced already. Okay, so it won't yeah. affect our current GDP because it was the car was not sold or has been done in the previous one, but it is going to affect what the investment component overall. Please do you get it. No, I don't. Okay, so we are asking you what component of GDP would each of the following transaction affect. Explain. The explain there is not for fun. What we are trying to say is can Tank Automobile sells a car from its inventory? What did we say inventory is? If you produce and yeah, you've not sold produce, it. Right? Not sold. Good. good. So, meaning that the word inventory basically makes it the production is not this year. Okay. So, we are assuming the production is done in the previous year. So, for our current GDP, this, will, this whole statement won't affect it. But overall, since it is coming from the word inventory, it should affect what? Our investment. Please do get it. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. In the overall. Good. For the overall, it's, it's supposed to affect our inventory, the investment. investment. But for the calculation of our GDP, invest this inventory amount shouldn't be added. Do you get it? Yes, please. Okay. So B, a family buys a new fridge, a new refrigerator from US. Which component do you think this will affect? Consumption. And I'm gonna... Thank you very much. Why are you saying consumption? Because it's a durable good. It affects the, the household. Okay. They are good just for immediate use, so it's a durable good. So, is it only consumption this can affect? Hey, this is this is the only consumption this can affect? Net export. Um, and net export. 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 It's Next. coming from what? US. Yeah. So import. Right. So it means what? Our import is this is going to affect our consumption and yeah. what? Net export. Good. Auntie Jane buys a new house. Auntie Jane buys a new house. <laughs> consumption. Why are you saying consumption? Because it's a durable good. And it's a durable good. Sir, can you also say it will affect? Sir, can you say it's a residual investment? Yes, I, I would say it's an investment because house is an, yeah. it, it, it's an investment good. Okay, yes. it could be that Auntie Jane, what she does is she buys houses and so, okay, we don't mm. know. So, so far as house is an investment good, we would, be, we would say this would affect our investment. Are we cool? Um, sir, but you see, um, like, Investment Auntie standard Jane. GDP is saying that like they are produced but not so so will it still be under investment. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, we are not saying investment is produced and not so that is inventory. Okay. Yeah, sorry, inventory. But we are saying this would affect our investment because new house is what an investment good. Yeah. Are we cool? Yes. All right. You buy fish and chips. Consumption. No. Thank you very much. Why are you saying consumption? Say because they are eating it. <laughs> and it's also more it. durable. It's a Thank you very good. much. That's so yeah. that's a perfect answer. If I'm the one marker, <laughs> I'll give you the two marks. Okay. So the government resurfaces university roads. The government resurfaces. Government expenditure. Thank you very much. Please, are we following? You can see that this yes, is please. purely government expenditure. Okay, now let's look at the F. Can tanker builds an assembly plant in Accra? Say, 
say investment. Why are you saying that? Because under investment, you said there were things like residential investments, like when you're constructing factories and those things. So I'm assuming it's investment. I like your answer, but can you tell me this on a paper? I'm going to say because you said, so you said investment, which is perfect. Why? I said because investment, like he's investing in Accra. <laughs> okay, because, yeah, I, I mean, I think it's investment because it's not the government that is like doing the Thank construction. You. What you're saying, I'm not saying it's wrong, it's correct, but I want your explanation. You know, when we say Kantanga, a Kantanka, you know, it's a person's name. But the moment we say Kantanka alone, we know it's a business, right? If I had said Safo Kantanka, you know I'm talking to an individual. But when I say Kantanka, it means it's the entire business doing something. Do we get it? Yes. Okay, so that yes. is why you're saying it will affect investment. Now, let's take the G. Your parents buy a bottle of French wine. Consumption. Consumption. consumption and what? Net export. Net export. Thank you very much. The one who said net export, why did you say that? I'm interested. Because of French wine. French Thank wine very much. is imported into the country. Ghana, we don't produce French wine. Okay. And we all know the Ghanaian wine, Akwetishi, right? So is it okay. net import or net export? Okay, so for us, your parents is the one buying. Okay, we are assuming your parents are in Ghana, so they are important. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Kofi buys wood, which is used to produce tables. Then I use investment. Perfect. Don't think twice. Why would Kofi be buying woods and producing tables? It means he's into business, right? Yeah. Yeah. Kofi can't be buying uh, wood cement. I'm a, a Ghanaian national buys a new hotel in the UK. Hey, can you say it is investment? I would have said net exports, but she's not like doing any export anything is an investment do you know this won't affect any gdp item here why perfect you know the because it's in the youtube yes ama is not staying in ghana yes, but an ama is a ghanaian but she's staying in what uk and she buys a hotel in the uk so the uk people People will be taking the yeah. Oh, consider that yeah. in their GDP. Good, mm -hmm. but we will consider we would consider AMA in our GNP, but we won't consider AMA in our GDP. GDP. And GDP. what is the question? GDP. GDP. So we won't consider this in our GDP. Please take note. So that's why they said AMA, a Ghanaian national, buys a new hotel in the UK. So it means Ama is not living in Ghana. Are we cool? Yes, please. Now let's please. move to the question two. I know we, we won't finish, but let's try at least solve one B. All right, so Edwina, I'll do that, okay? I'll send it. I'll send the, the tutorial set to you guys. Okay, Michelle. Michelle, you've raised your hand. Okay, so let's see the problem too. Oh, Sabogu. Sir, sir, please. Sir, sir, please. With the H, I thought the wood was an intermediary good. So why is it calculated? We have the, the wood 
Mm. Yeah, because if we look in the slide, they said that um, intermediaries are usually not added to the GDP. It's the final product okay, so that's added. You see, we can, we can see the word buy here. Yes. So it means we have monetary terms for this wood. Yes, sir. They said which is used to produce wood. It produced. Are you getting it? Meaning in the next year. Does that mean we shouldn't capture that? You get it. Bro, Paul. Yes, sir. Did you get it? Yes, sir, I get it. Yeah. So please, let's take this. For each of the following transactions, determine the country, the contribution to the current GDP. So you see, this one we are saying the current GDP. Okay, current. It means if it has happened last year or it will happen next year, don't add it. First one. First one. On January 1st, you buy 10 gallons of petrol at 16 per gallon. Okay. The filling station purchased the petrol the previous week at the wholesale price of what? 13 per gallon. Please, what would be the contribution to the GDP? Uh, will it be the 10 gallons times the 16 um, cities? So, what, what is your answer? 160. No, Lydia. So please, I think since it was purchased in the previous week, it's not supposed to affect the current year's GDP. Okay, Lydia, you said something. But let's see something here. I'm coming. Let's let's try and understand something here. It's not all that will affect our current year GDP but something should affect our current year GDP. Okay, so let's see. So Lydia. Uh, yes, sir. Let's see. What, what happened? They said that what? Um, on January 1st, you bought 10 gallons of petrol at 16 cities, right? Then the filling station purchased, the filling station purchased petrol the previous week at a wholesale of 13 per gallon. So the previous week from January means we are somewhere around um, 23rd December, right? Which yes. Was, so meaning that that 13 cities that the petrol shell they bought has been captured in last year's GDP, right? Yes. yes. Good. So if we want to know what will happen to the current year GDP, sorry. Um, what if we want to know what will happen to the current year GDP, then it should be what the 10 that we purchased this year 16 minus what the 13 because this 13 has already been catered for right in the previous year, so it is going to be this 10, yes. which is what 30. They said, What is the addition or the contribution to the current year GDP? And you remember we told you GDP considers only this current year. So if the thing has already taken place, the addition is what we are looking for. Please do we get it? Sir. Yes. Please, with the 13, is it previous okay. week or previous year? Check it. Previous week. And if you count previous week back, it means we'll be in December. Okay. Okay, they said on 1st January. So previous week means we'll be in what? December. Okay, sure. Yeah. So for questions like this, for each one, you show the working. Yes. You like show the workings. Uh, you, you won't get anything. Okay, so let's see the B. So it will be 30. Okay, just subtract this. 13 from the 16 times the 10 gallons you bought. That would be the contribution to the GDP. Now the B, 
you purchased a locally manufactured AK-47 used in the First World War during an exhibition for two million. The brokerage fee was 6% of what? The sales value. So what would be the contribution? So it will only be 120,000. Is it 12,000? Oh, yeah, 120,000. How did you get it? I found 6% of That's the million. Cool. And since. Okay, you know, this AK 47 we are talking of, it's happened years, years back. Okay. The addition to the GDP is the current brokerage fee that you, you paid. Okay, which is what? 6% of the sales value. Please, are we cool? Okay, yes, so now let's see the last, the, let's finish this and end this class, eh? I beg. So okay. a homemaker enters the workforce, taking a job that pays 50,000, okay, a year. The homemaker now hires a nanny who is paid 16,000 per year. What is the contribution? There will be 66,000. Perfect. Where did you get that 66,000 from? I added the 50,000 plus the 16,000. Who is lost? I am lost. I'm lost. I'm lost. You are lost. Oh, a homemaker yes, enters the workforce, okay? The homemaker enters the workforce taking a job that pays 50,000, okay? So you, you are receiving 50,000 a year and you decided to pay someone or hire another person who is a nanny, who is supposed to be paid 16,000. Remember this 50,000 is paid by your job and you are now paying the 16,000 to the person. Don't tell me you are deducting 16,000 from your 50,000. We, we don't really care. All that we care is the source is coming from one point and it's coming from another point. Please do we get it? Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, so when we add this, this is the contribution towards the GDP. Now, you are informed that you have won a lottery worth five million to be paid to you immediately. What happens? Okay, we just five million. What will be the contribution? Five million. Five. Oh, you know, I remember I told you something about transfer payment. Lottery is a transfer payment. It adds nothing to the GDP. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, we are not receiving anything back. But let's ask. So there's one is for the government. You, but remember, we said that one is the government. We specify. You remember we didn't specify the lottery was from a private source or government source, okay? Yeah. And okay. so far as we are not, and who pays the lottery people? Definitely it will come from the government because we have NLA, right? National Lottery Authority. Yeah. Okay. And they pay them, okay? So we are not receiving anything in addition. So we consider this as a transfer payment. Now let's look at the E. This is where something must happen. You are informed that you have won a lottery worth three million to be paid to you immediately. In addition, the JNL Ghana National Lottery pays you 6,000 to appear in their promotional adverts. So what would be the contribution to our GDP? 6,000. 6,000. Perfect. Okay, remember, you see, if you've seen this thing before, you see some people when they win bet, when they take the check, they will take a picture. Yeah. With it. Do you remember? Yes, sir. Or have you seen that before? So that is what we are talking about, or when we say promotional advert, because we want to tell the average Ghanaian people that it's a real source, something that is real, you can also win. So when someone wins, we take a picture with the person with a check, then the person will show it to the whole world that he won this, do you get it? So that three, this that 6,000 is what will be the contribution to what? 
the GDP. Okay. Okay. So you see how the GDP stuff work. You need to really, really go back, go through this again. Okay, next time I'll try and solve these questions with you. Okay, after we are done with the, um, this, uh, these are not difficult, okay? So you, see, uh, you can also, yes, yes. Please, would a, a question B, when you calculate the brokerage fee, which is 6% of the 2 million, will you yes. add what you get to the 2 million or what you get is your answer? No, 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 no. The brokerage fee is what we need. The sister, the 120,000 is what we need. That's all. Remember, oh, okay. this it's an exhibition you went to. Okay. So mm -hmm. we are assuming that the, the price has been paid in the first world war. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we don't really consider it. Uh, yes. Please, for, for the E. Problem two, the A. The yes. last question. You said that they've informed you that you've won a lottery of three million. And in addition okay. to the three million, so they are adding six thousand. So why is that the GP, the GDP will not be three million plus the six thousand because it will all be within that current year? Because Okay, so is it Benice? Benice, I don't want talking. Yes, please. Or Benita. Yes, okay, yes. so we are saying that we are not adding the three million because three million is a transfer payment. We don't receive anything in that after we pay you this. It's a lottery. Lottery is part of transfer payment. When okay. you win the lottery, we give you five thousand. Do we take anything from you again? No. Or you are going to tell me that that one city you used to stick is the money or no right <laughs> so for the lottery uh, but then, uh, yeah, I, I think so let's check it Stop, can you hear me yeah i can hear you now okay so if uh, can for the attack on it because it's a gift to the food. This book can be a gift. Okay, so we, we are actually not adding. Stop, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Okay. I also know. Okay, okay, so I the whole idea. Uh huh. Benita. Should I write? Yeah, I, I'll be glad if you write it. I but think my time is up. So your your the president will log me out very soon. But I'll be glad if you complete this as soon as possible. So please can you send a tutorial says to our I'll do that. Thank you. You're welcome. So please the slides, then the slides. The next one, the slides. Okay, I'll slides. do that. Okay, Yvonne, I'll do that. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome, guys. So, have a lovely day. Please, go and revise your notes. So that's when we are having the tutorials. You won't, guy, you, you won't do shaka. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, have a nice sir. day. Thank you. Thank you for Thank coming. You. You're yeah, Thank, Thank you. Enjoy the class. Thank you. Enjoy your class too.